The treachery of the Ar Adunaim has come to pass, and bitter is the sting of their betrayal. We extended a hand of fellowship, embracing them in our land, aiding their quest to rebuild the Black Haven of Umbar. In return, all we asked for was their aid in the imminent war against Gondor. Alas, it seems the taint of cowardice and short-sightedness courses through the veins of all the sons of Numenor. Argimilcad, blinded by his own conceit, deemed it wise to lay siege upon our precious city of Finable, seeking to subjugate our noble people. Yet in his misguided endeavour, he finds the Haradrim far mightier than his feeble estimation. Even now, as our forces encircle the walls of the city of Talaljav, our spies bring tidings of his own sons entrenched within its garrison. Aye, blood shall be repaid, dear Haven Master. In truth, perhaps your strategy held a modicum of merit, for the only path to vanquish the forces of the White Tree lies in the unity of all the denizens of the South. But lo, there existed a minute flaw in your design. Argimilcad, you are not the one chosen to guide us, for you are a stranger to these hallowed lands, a wanderer far removed from the desert's embrace. It is I, born of these scorched domains, who shall assemble the tribes under the banner of the Black Serpent, as we march as one, resolute and indomitable. Greetings my friends and welcome back to the third episode of our Harad campaign in Third Age Total War, Divide and Conquer. Today is a very hot day in Belgium, it's about 30 degrees Celsius right now, which for a lot of you might not be that hot, but for me is absolutely sweltering and I don't do well with heat. Uh, normally this is the part where I would apologize for having a fan running in the background to cool me down a little bit, but today I will not do that. First and foremost, because I'm lazy, and secondly, because I want to experience what it's like to be a Haradrim warrior fighting on the battlefield and absolutely sweating my ass off. Although I'm not decked out in full battle gear, I am decked out in, well, much less than that. Um, but I just want to experience what it's like, the full Harad experience. Talking about the full Harad experience, that apparently also entails being backstabbed, sorta, by the Aradunai. Uh, they tried to attack us at Finabel, we absolutely crushed them at Finabel, and now we are launching a counter-offensive at Talaljav. And we caught ourselves a nice little a nice little piece of breakfast, because we captured, or oh, well, we haven't captured them yet, but we encountered both Lord Gimelzor and his brother Gimelthon, the two sons of Gimelchad, so basically the two faction heirs of the Aradhanaim. If we kill them both, then the sons of the Aradhanaim are dead, and that does not look good for uh, the rest of the war, for them at least. Looks quite good for us. Anyway, uh, enough blabbering. I'm going to jump in the battlefield right away. Strategy seems pretty clear, right? We're just going to make sure that these three armies cannot consolidate. We want to fight them one per one. Divide and conquer, have you? This army is not going to be a problem whatsoever. It's going to be really easy to clean up. Captain Doguzagar, slightly better units. Need to give him a little bit of respect. And then, of course, we have Lord Gimelzor. That's going to be the hardest, the toughest nut to crack. Uh, the garrison, of course, from Tadaljav. So without further ado, Arthvin is going to jump in with his Muhad friends alongside Abrazir and a bunch of other chaff. Alright, start of the deployment. There are Muhad Beastmasters, the Camel Riders, Arthvin himself. He looks pretty cool, look at him. Oh, that's a beautiful model. The Muhad themselves also look really cool. Like, Harad is such a um, kind of underrated faction. Not a lot of people really give them much thought. But the developers have really gone out of their way to give them like fantastic models and just <sighs> their lore is really cool and, and their units are really nice and like they're just really cool. I just really like Harad, very underappreciated faction and undeservedly so. I'm going to turn off my fire at will because I do not want to waste our precious ammunition on just those couple of Corsair units. I'm just going to mainly have my uh, cavalry run into them. Alongside my infantry, of course. The archers will be more used for the second army, the javelins for the third army. That's sort of the general plan I've got. But I want to be somewhat careful with my units. Let's see, is that everyone set up? Yeah, okay. So immediately, we're going to push forth. Um, yeah, you are going to immediately charge the Corsair Raiders. Arthven. 
You're going to join. Uh, just send in the warband, really. No reason to wait. These guys are really weak, the Corsairs. I only ever bother with the archers, because archers are always good. Even if they have a low missile attack, they get some damage in. But these raiders, like, look at them. We just carve a path through them. Like, <laughs> no battle, no nothing, you know. Just a really easy cleanup. Alright, let's just see for a moment. These are the two generals. Oh, they look scary. <laughs> Damn, they look even better than what I remember. The Brutheal, watch. That is one of the most beautiful looking units in the game, damn. And then, of course, those guys. Is that the Nardutarik? I can't remember the names, man. Alright, this army's pretty much done for. With very minimal investment. I guess we'll focus on the two sons of the Aradonaim first. So that we can kind of see what kind of ammo we've got remaining afterwards, and I don't need to guess how much ammo I'll need. Alright. Infantry. I'm gonna try to not use you all that much, maybe to keep Gimel Zor busy. Sorry, Gimel Thon, the archer guy. Because that might be useful. Uh, but mostly gonna be the camels. And of course the other Muhad. Need to make sure that that archer can't get any shots off, and then I should be able to kite them rather easily. But the Brutheal Watch, we need to watch out for them, because they are scary. They're a very strong unit. Their morale is better than I expected, but it's only a matter of time. Alright, I don't want to lose these Mohad Beastmasters. These guys, not so much problem, because of course they're a general unit, so... They replenish their men. Alright, I think... I'm going to immediately give my archers the command to go after the Brutheal Watch and rush in my infantry. And then we need to watch out and get a good idea of where they will aim for. As soon as they're committed in a fight, I can send in my cav without too much worry. Oh, they are just going in like crazy. And then the Muhad, they can go after the Arudanaim Armsmen, that's what they're called. There we are. Wonderful. And I want to make sure that we don't really have to face them in melee. There we go. We have trapped the Brutheal Watch. Okay, they're trying to run back. That's okay. We have them where we want them. They're committed. Careful, Arthur. Well Don't get cocky. That guy's dead, see? He got cocky. He thought he could take him head on. You can't. Okay, maybe that guy can. Okay, maybe he's an exception. <laughs> Stop trying to disprove my point here. Alright. Do you have any special abilities? No. Okay. Good to know. Yeah, they're going down hard. These guys are also taking a beating, but... We've got a lot more chucking to do before they go down. And then, like, permanent charge mode, which is annoying, but... Alright, whatever. Run back, run back. I don't want to use skirmish mode, because skirmish mode kind of doesn't work properly. So I need to give a manual orders. Uh, no, you stay on the arms, man. Uh, sorry, the watch. The children of the watch. For you Star Wars fans. Oh, that's a new voice line. Is that camel mounted skirmish? That's what he's yelling. Nice. So they got those big shields, which is slightly upsetting. Of course, I still have these Muhad as well, which I might have to commit. I was trying to save them a little bit. Alright. So keep an eye out for those reinforcements, because they're coming in slowly but surely. Yeah, Gimel Thon. This is Gimel Zor, this is Gimel Thon. I always mix them up. He's getting his ass whooped. Uh, I need to send in my spearmen to keep the armsmen busy. Not ideal. I was hoping my javelins would be a tad bit more effective, but... I do believe these guys are also armor-piercing with their infantry weapon. I think they've got maces, but I don't want to send them in melee. I want to keep them alive a little bit longer. I'm not sure if I can already retrain them, so yeah. But if they can get a volley in, whilst my spearmen rush in... Look at that. Point blank, pretty much. There he is. He's got three swords. Why do you need three swords, mate? You only got 
two arms, right? Gotta make sure that generals don't get out, though. That's important. We shouldn't just assume that in this fight, if we win, that we'll kill them. They could always try to escape. We don't want that. Okay, the arms are now taking an absolute battering. Uh, hold on to your ammo for now. Camels, charge! That was quite effective. Hold on, hold on. Don't fire when the camels are still there. Camels have really big hitboxes, so very weak to... Uh, okay, came up on, good. For a moment I thought that might have been Arthur. So they're very weak to javelins and other ranged units. Just don't really perform all that well against them. Alright, he's trying to charge me. Uh, don't do that. Alright, Gimelthon is dead. Now Gimelzord is next. Gimelchad is going to be a very sad man today, unless he doesn't like his sons. And actually, the day of recording, so probably one day before uploading, is Father's Day. Uh, not the best Father's Day gift I could have gotten, Gimelchad, I suppose. Ah, crap. Those crossbows are coming in. Uh, no, don't charge him then. Well within our grasp. Go back to Muhar. I, Marpo, will surely see this and lose heart. Nardu Tariq. Those scare me. Warriors, those don't really scare me. They have, like, two-handed axes? Oh, okay. They've got, like, boarding axes. That's pretty cool. Where are you fighting at? Don't fight at my camels. That's all I'm asking. They should be going down. And I'm only losing some Haradrim Spearmen, so that's a really good investment on my side. I'm going to charge with my camels. I hope he doesn't shoot me. Oh, he's shooting at my archers. Wonderful. Then this charge should come in from that blind spot. Gimelthorn. Gimelzor, sorry. I keep mixing up the names. Should be dead. I'm also happy to see that the stuttering is no longer happening. I completely forgot about it until just now, so I didn't do anything to try and fix it. <laughs> Unlike what I uh, promised. But it seems to have fixed itself. The best kind of problems are the ones that fix themselves. Alright, Arfen, I think you're done for today. Though you have performed admirably. And now the Tariq are coming in. Mm. How about one last ride, Arfen? Commit them. Fight on the warriors. Do they have shields? They do have shields. These guys love their shields. Even two-handed units have... Well, most units are two-handed, but units that use two-handed weaponry have shields. Actually, that would be really cool in, like, Medieval 2 or in Dark that you'd have, like, units like, veterans that are missing certain arms or maybe, like, dwarves that use prosthetics. That's something dwarves would invent, right? That's totally a dwarven thing to use prosthetics. I don't know if it's mentioned anywhere in, in The Lord of the Rings. I can't think of anything, but that doesn't mean it's not mentioned anywhere. So if you guys know of any, uh, any people in Middle Earth that are mentioned to have like prosthetics or missing limbs or anything? That would be quite cool. Don't know why. I guess I'm a bit of a sadist. Uh, how is Gimel Zor still alive? These guys have better morale than I thought. You gotta give them that. Victory is but well nothing hits quite as hard as hard. a calf sandwich. Sometimes you don't even need the full sandwich, just a half sandwich will do. No, but seriously, why is Gimelzor still alive? That man's getting bullied to death. But he's fighting like a lion, I'll give him that. I'll give him a proper burial, he definitely earned that. Absolutely. Alright, pull back. Those Nardu Tariq are ah, tough. The other I am in general, they, they deserve some respect. I mean, I'll kill them all the same, but perhaps I can recruit some of them. That would be quite cool. Someone did mention that if I take Umbar, I do get access to the Aradunaim ships, apparently, which is something I didn't know. I think that's something new. Um, but it would be cool to also get access to, like, even if it's just, like, the lower tier units. Although, then again, these are Dark Numenorians. We don't really like them. Like, it's not... The Haradrim and the Aradine don't really have that much in common, I don't think, except they just kind of happen to be in the same area of the map. But that's more just divide and conquer the lore. There we go. Oh, fleeing? No, no, no. Gimelzo doesn't flee. Yeah, that's not him. That's the other general. Gimelzo does not strike me as a guy that would flee. I would much rather die. Like yep. 
So that army is toast. Now it's just a matter of finishing off the Gimmel Man. The penultimate Gimmel Man. After this, only one Gimmel Man remains. The main Gimmel Man. The enemy general has been captured while running away. Guard him. Would be cool to capture Gimmel Zord. If this game had like a better diplomacy thingy, it would be really cool to have like Gimmel Zord as a hostage and I could like do some kind of exchange with Gimmel Chad. But the way it's looking right now. This man is just being bullied out of existence, which I am not too uh, opposed to. Alright, let's surround the man. Don't shoot the man. But, like, it's over, man. I have not only the high ground, but I have all the ground. So I'm not, I'm not sure how much more I need to throw his way. I think, yeah, he can't really do anything. He's just getting harassed. Alright, let's speed this up a little bit. They run like children. He's trying to run. Uh. Them from the pit. So I think I actually captured him. Fallen. Fallen. Uh, I'm not sure if I captured him, we'll see. But either way, this battle is over, right? No? Battle's not over? I thought it was over. Oh, I did get the message. I'm just gonna make sure that we run them down. I got my camels right here. What sounds do camels make? I really don't have any idea. Oh, apparently they do... <laughs> Okay. Actually, I should know that from Age of Empires. Ooh. That was a good win. That w Thank you to Anarian. I pretty much just followed his plan that he put in the comment section of the previous episode to a T. And it worked out wonderfully. Uh, Black Snake got, got the most kills. Not a big surprise. Muhad Beastmas is also topping the charts. And besides that, I've kept my Muhad tribesmen in pristine condition and my other beast masters the non-general units in somewhat pristine condition so that's good the other ones i can easily retrain the corsairs they only lost three and they killed 102 so even a cheap mercenary corsair unit they can actually perform quite well if you have uh, the necessary other units to uh, keep the enemy infantry in position so that's a really good result and that is talal Jaff in our possession all right. Ooh, I captured both Gimelthon and Gimelzor. That's a big, big envelope full of money. However, I'm still gonna say no to that. I don't want to risk losing the war. I want to finish off the other night. It'll be difficult, but definitely possible. All right, let's occupy because I'm sure Taladjov has plenty of Haradrim culture. Oh crap! It'll do. I just noticed something. Please don't have any troops aboard. Okay. So it's Sacklethort, the legendary admiral of the other name. And I can't park my ship anywhere safely. Normally you could put your ship in like a port and they're safe, but I don't own any ports, so hmm. But I'm just happy he's not like funneling units in. That would be problematic. Alright. Um Am I making money? I am. I'm making an okay amount of money. I think what I'll do is get a meeting hall here. Just so Abrazir gets free upkeep. I'm gonna send the scout over. Well, first of all, I'm actually gonna put down some watchtowers of my own. Just so I know what's going on in the world. Okay. Because I wanna move my spy to the south. Towards. Is it Khaldun? I think it's called. Ardumir. Ardumir has a very small garrison. Nothing worth reporting. So I think I'll take Athen with a bunch of units, not everyone, and send them towards Ardumir. Basically, I want to finish off the Aradam as quickly as possible. Because in the long run, they are a better faction than me. Gotta know your strengths and gotta know your weaknesses, eh? If I can retrain some lads, I'll do that. That's not a proper retraining. Um, have Athen take Ardumir, then try and send some reinforcements. Not to take Umbar, I want to keep Umbar for last, because I want to make sure I regicide the faction. Uh, but then take Khaldun, that's over there, yeah. So Ardumir, then Khaldun. Unless, do they hold a couple Merlon? No, they don't. Okay, that's a beefy garrison. I could try some diplomacy with Dol Amroth, but I don't know. That kind of goes against the queen of the campaign, I'd say. So how about I use my uh, diplomatic scout, three units in Khaldun. That's not a lot either. But I really don't have much res I could send some troops from Amonethal, but I kind of want to keep a strategic reserve over there. So that's kind of hard. 
kind of difficult. So I think we'll just rock with that. Have Arthvan take Ardumir. And then try and send some troops to take Khaldun and then Umbar. And that should be the other night done, right? Unless I'm missing something obvious. Perhaps they've taken this place here, Cobaltophilus. I doubt it though. Alright, um, besides that, something can be said about popping down some extra watchtowers, although I have a vision of most of my territory. Uh, I will take Ankaragmir later on as well, don't worry about that. I've got a lot of people asking me about Ankaragmir, which is the most southern province over here at the Oasis. We will take it eventually. Alright, Mr. Kardashian, pop down some watchtowers. I've got pretty good vision. Could plop some troops in this fort. Because, see, I got a pretty big line of sight if Dol Amroth tries anything. I should be able to move troops in and out of the fort. Although, actually, it's further than one turn away, so. That actually doesn't work. That's unfortunate. Yes, noble master. So you have an upkeep. So you bring in 300 gold. How much is your upkeep? 287. Okay, so you're worth what you bring in. Yeah. Otherwise, I plop them in the fort. Uh, yeah, not much else I can do. Yeah, I just need to work with what I got. So the Talajov is a fairly wealthy settlement. So that's good. I'm keeping just the extra Muhar tribes on just in case there's any forces lurking about that I don't know about. So. No, I think that's an turn then, right? Anything else? New family members? Good. How does my family tree look at the moment? Good, good, good. Lots of children, that's good. I've got a pretty... Pretty firm family tree. Lots of boys. Five boys, three girls. That's pretty good. The seed is strong. Normally I don't pay too much attention to the family tree, but... Yeah. As I take a nice sip of water. I'm Belgian though, so I'm drinking water from a beer glass. <laughs> just so I, <laughs> I can at least pretend I'm drinking a beer. But in these kind of temperatures, it's even too hot to enjoy a nice cold beer. Much rather have some water. And if you're watching this video and it's warmer you are, make sure to drink some water as well. Yeah, Wakaz was gonna die. Unless he flees... Yeah, okay. Sailing on into the open ocean. Like the weary camel, now we must rest. Those are words to live by. Alright, I think Amonethor should also get a meeting hall. Sackalthor... Uh, not Sackalthor, because I'm already has free upkeep, right? Yeah. So now you're up. Because how much money does that save me? I do believe it's one of the best investments you can get. 252. There's no other building I can get right now that gives me 252 a turn. Meeting hall. Mm hmm. Okay. Retraining complete of Haradrim archers. I will send them over towards Taraljav. Just gotta double check. Because I feel like the other name should have more troops. That worries me greatly. Okay, they're getting more troops. But very shitty troops. <laughs> I guess I really have taken down most of the the elite, making sure I don't run into any problems with how far I can go. And they've been so nice to put watchtowers pretty much everywhere, so once we take these lands, I'll have vision everywhere pretty much, which is fantastic. Uh, Wakas, how about we sail to Umba? <laughs> go block their port. That would be quite funny. Wakas <laughs> just like arriving on this dinky little long ship and then the, the other rebel like what the hell man yes, my master. assemble the fleet my lord the fleet is somewhere in her heart oh gosh darn it uh, alright let's pop down a watchtower on the hills over here there's some devastation here so I think there's an army around here could be mercenaries. Could be Dol Amroth trying to pull the sneaky on me. We'll see. I should be okay in Ardumir. Oh, that guy does not look healthy. Look at him. He looks like a Skyrim character. He's got some... Yeah. Naru Naru household guard. Hmm. Scary unit. But our javelin should be able to penetrate him quite easily. Seven turns. So I want to wait seven turns though. The thing is, I don't really have... I, got, I rely too much on my cavalry. But I have time. Time is on my side, I think, in this campaign. It is a rare sight indeed. Normally, I'm fighting against the clock. And by all means, I don't want Gondor or Dolamroth to get too powerful. But 
most of the time Mordor wins against them. Though I am playing as Harad, so Gondor does get some bonuses, so that they might win against Mordor. But I do believe in this case time is on my side if it leads to me conquering the Aradhanan. That should give me a really, really nice boost. So, same with that. Very welcome. That should give me a really nice boost uh, when I go to war against Gondor later on. Okay, they're training some extra troops. I need to make sure I can do the same. So retrain them, train them. Uh, and then spend some money on getting a meeting hall in Estala. Because this guy, he's got a unit of 32. So that's 411 upkeep that I'm saving with the meeting hall. The large off meeting hall. Please tell me here, get free upkeep. Yeah, they get free upkeep. If they got like the little... I call it blue, but it's not really blue. It's like dark grey-ish color. That means they're free upkeep. You can also hover over it and it should say free upkeep. Yeah, free upkeep while garrisoned. Yes, noble master. Ooh, I could get some Harandar mercenaries. They're quite expensive though, but they would help a lot in the offense. Um, yeah, I don't think there's anything else I want to be doing. Just kind of pressing the end turns. I'm just kind of thinking here. Is there anything else? Anything obvious? I should be wary of. I want to make sure you can always make it back to Amonithal. Amonithal, Amonithal. I know I pronounce it differently, but I don't know how you say it properly. Uh, okay, so you move to Tal al -Jaf. As soon as I can muster a big enough army, I'll march towards Khaldun. And I think I'll pull some troops from Amonithal. Um... Mm, let's pull these two units. Just so I have enough manpower to take Khaldun, and then I can go towards Umbar. I don't think the other name get a last stand. I mean, I don't think they get a doom stack when they're below three settlements. They do get a last stand stack because they're um, a horde faction. But I don't think they get an extra doom stack. They shouldn't, at the very least. If they do, I'm utterly screwed. There's nothing I can do against that right now. Okay, let's block the port of Umbar. <laughs> Yeah, that's really good. Perfect. Alright. Make sure there's no other armies with your other name. No? If there was an army, I'd expect them to be near a couple Merlons. Nothing to be seen, so... Good for us. We're getting a lot of comments asking about how I make my intros and my thumbnails. I've explained it in previous videos, but I happily go over it again. Um, just want to clarify that I'm not really that artistic of a person. I don't make any of the thumbnail art, uh, nor do I make any of the art, ah, that is an extra army, that you see in the intros. I just edit it all together, and a bunch of it is from, from the movie, from gameplay, or from the Game of Thrones history and lore channel stuff, which is where I get a lot of uh, content from. Just want to clear that up. All right, Captain Fu and it joined in, which is good, because now I don't have to wait seven turns. Oh, I think that's the army from Khaldun. They really, if that is the army from Khaldun, they hold ass to march all the way from Khaldun to Ardumit. Nah, that's got to be a different army. But it is the exact same lineup though, which is odd. But yeah, nothing to worry about. These guys, their morale is so bad. Poor, impetuous. Yeah, that's not a problem. Uh, Lord Uri Thor himself, not another household guard, is a respectable unit. And then of course the Azrazair crossbowman. He's the faction heir now, but I assume there's a general in here as well. Um, okay, well, this shouldn't be too difficult, I don't think. I don't want to get too cocky, though. But we'll clear up the Corsair archers and raiders first. Save our ammo for Urithor, at least our javelins. And be done with it. Take Ardomir and be another step closer to recruiting the Trollmen of Harad. Alright, let's do this. We shall all find a way to an honorable victory. Alright. I like the layout of the land. Let's we got a nice hill here. So I can use my archers. I don't need to use my archers per se against another, another household guard. Their shields are way too beefy and thick for me to have any hopes of... And their armor as well, of piercing that. Uh, no, I want both units, please. Camels, you will be on charge duty. So hold on to those javelins for now. Our foe brings more men to the battle. That is your general? It is. Let us pay him a visit. Um, don't want to rush in my... Nah, no, I'm going to hold on to my infantry a little bit longer. My archers have such free shots here. It's not worth to risk any friendly fire. 
Athwin might take some shots, but that's okay. As long as I don't fight on my other beast masters, that's good. So I'm gonna move a bit wider because I think they're lining up. Alright. Go wide. The other guys are coming in rather fast. But that's okay. Should be able to clean them up before supper. Alright, send in my infantry against those archers. Careful. See, I don't like those archers. They're gonna go after my beast masters, which is not good. If they wanna go after Arthur, that's fine. Okay, I'm out of range. Send in the Corsair Raiders, perfect. Fire on the other Raiders. They're keeping the archers in the back. Perfect, perfect, perfect. I don't know what camels eat, but today they're eating Corsair archers. Is it a feast? I don't know. I imagine they're a bit chewy, but... Well, don't be too picky, eh? Victory is well within our grasp. I actually charge them. See this and lose heart. The enemy are badly bloodied. They have lost half their men. Okay. Fighting on two fronts, which is not easy, but... Ah, they pulled back their raiders. Smart. I mean, it is smart, but I don't think it'll make a difference, but... Oh, then what I was already gone. I didn't even get to charge you, mate. Come on. Alright, their reinforcements are coming in. They got crossbows, which is a bit scary, and of course, these guys. The Naru Naru Household Guard. You know, we should give proper respect. Unfortunately. Alright, they're gone. So, sending the infantry to quickly mop up those archers. You can charge the raiders head on, that's not a problem. I'll send in the extra beast masters just in case. You guys, if you can fire on the crossbows, please do so. I'll put you on wide formation. Please run. Alright. Infantry's coming in. Good, good, good. And, okay, they're gone. Once the Naru Naru are in play, that is when we send in the javelins. Okay. Their morale should crumple. And Pizanar should, as soon as Arthur comes in, I'm sure they will flee with their tails between their legs. Ah, and the captain is dead as well. If this is indeed the garrison from Khaldun, which I will know in due time, I don't need to wait any longer. I need to send in immediately what I've got at Tal al -Jaf. There's no point in me holding on to my troops waiting for reinforcements if there's just the general there. Black Snake out alone could take. Not a problem. Alright. You guys, you're up. I'm not gonna actually tell you to fight at will just yet, because you might try to fight at the crossbowman, which is not worth it. Alright, Archers, if you want to get some free shots at the Naranada Household Guard, feel free to try, but it's not gonna be easy. Actually, I'd much rather have you fight on the crossbows. They're a much softer target. They're somewhat ignoring my Archers, which is peculiar. Like they're not the most top-tiered archers ever, but you should still give them some respect. Those Corsair archers got like 200 kills last time, or 100 kills, I can't remember exactly. Alright. The range is a bit poopy, but that's fine. Oh, crap. And they turned around and started fighting on my Beastmasters, which is really bad. Look how quickly they fell down. Alright, let's get rid of their crossbows. Most unfortunate. This is not what I wanted. Not at all. I wanted to have my infantry fighting the crossbowmen and me kiting the Naru Naru. That's okay. We need to adapt. We need to overcome this. That's fine. Pull them out. Those guys will completely obliterate my infantry. Make no mistake about that. So I think if I have some money to spare, I'll get some mercenaries real quick. It's a bit of an investment, but it'll lead to me taking down the last two Aradhanaim territories much quicker, which is worth the investment. I'll make that money back in no time once I have Umbar. Definitely one of the wealthiest settlements I can get my hands on in the entire campaign. That will just afford me the war with Gondor in the late game. 100%. Alright. 
Get rid of this Azra Zair, please. So then we can prioritize the Naru Naru. Horns made of Horns clay. Made of clay. The Come on, keep chucking those javelins. I know there's probably some friendly fire, but that's okay. Can't make an omelette without breaking a few eggs. Trust me, I tried. You can't. Unless there's some sort of like vegan omelette that I'm not aware of. Something like that probably exists. Okay, you're out of ammo. You're on crossbowman duty. Yeah, my infantry got completely wiped out. That's unfortunate, but... Well, we can replace them with some mercenaries. Not ideal, but we'll get the job done. Infantry is not the main strength of the Haradrim anyway. Um, not until we unlock the Trollmen, of course. They will make a difference. But we still have a while to go before we get them. Actually, I see that. Uh, I think we only need two more settlements. After this one, I mean. So Kaldun and Umbar would get us the Trollmen. Although it would be nice to have the Trollmen before we face... Gimel Chad. Ah, oh, damn. Those Naranaros still have 22 men remaining. And I'm running out of javelins. That is most unfortunate. Well, I'm gonna have to do some hammer and anvil. Except my anvil just died, so I'm looking for a new anvil. <coughs> and then I'll just have my camels. Stop shooting my camels, mate! Are you blind? Friendly fire, man. Alright, 17 left. Those arrows, I assume, are not doing too much damage. They're killing more of my own men than anything else. So let's get them in. And then just do hammer and angle. These guys are skilled against mounds, though, so I want to be a bit careful with my camels. But, uh, yeah. Judge! Nice, that worked out. Pull back. Pull back. Make sure we don't lose our fin. Come on. Giddy up. Do you say giddy up against a camel? I'm not sure. I think I've ridden a camel once in like a circus when I was like five or something, but I can't. I can't say for sure. I'm looking back, it's probably animal cruelty, so I'm probably too happy that I don't remember it, but I don't remember how camels work. Yeah, I'm on that. A nice charge. And these guys also have maces, so I do believe they're also armor piercing, which is really nice. That's actually working out quite well. Okay, just five Naru Naru household guards standing. And just the general now. Oh no, 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 you don't get to run. These are other nine have really bad morale. The generals are so cowardly. They've all tried to run so far. This guy almost got away. Don't tell me we can't capture him, mate. We're chasing him with camels, please. There's no way he's making it out, right? Why are we not capturing him? Oh, there we go. In the end, it was the rock that captured him. Thank you, Dwayne. And your foes in sand! And not the worst. I got some of my warband back, which is nice. But I'm definitely going to have to invest in some infantry after this. But all in all, I'm happy we got um, the settlement. Uh, what's it called again? It's not Khaldun, it's the other one. Um, without having to wait all those turns. And if indeed this is the garrison from Khaldun, then it's not really a setback at all. Okay, yeah, there we go, nice. And there we have it. That's quite another nice ransom value, but again, I must say no. And Ardumir is mine! That is a wealthy settlement as well. And he's already bringing forth the garrison from Umbar. He's just sending him his rather name piecemeal. And they already built some mines in Ardemir. Okay, we'll read that in a moment. Um, mm, so I think that's the... So that wasn't the garrison of Khaldun. But they are leaving Khaldun pretty much undefended. Hmm. I need to wait for reinforcements. Unless... What if I just pick all of these guys up? March out, kill Captain Balakan, and then move to Khaldun. 
I could get away with it. Let's see if there's a general in Kaldun. That is. Lord Zagaradin. I'm using diplomacy for warfare, which I'm pretty sure is an act of... Well, a war crime, pretty much. Okay. Um, so Ardemir got mines. Wonderful. That is the most southern settlement here on this side. Umbar is looking mighty undefended. He's sending forth those Corsairs he picked up. Not a problem whatsoever. So. Plan, plan, plan. Thing is, Ardumir also needs to maintain somewhat a garrison, and I'm pretty sure Ardumir has the same recruitment pool. Yeah, that's the same pool of mercs. So I think I'll get one Corsair Reader unit here. Pick up the rest of the units here. Spend all my money, pretty much. Take the Muhad with me. I could... Could I take the archers? Yeah, I'm gonna take the archers. Leave Talajov undefended, but a garrison is moving in. Have them face Balakan. He could reach them. The calf could reach them. Do I want to sally out my calf? I think he could win, but I'm not going to risk it. Either he goes towards Ardumir and I crush him, or he go towards Khaldun and we crush him. See, I'll leave... I don't know. I'll leave these guys in Ardumir for a little bit longer. I need to take Khaldun first anyway. But once those guys are done, we can move on to Umbar. We're still blocking their port, which is hilarious. Uh, Gimel Chad himself, he's got... Narunaru Royal Guard. 31 defense, jeez! Mm, okay... Yeah, I think that's the plan. I'll just hold on to Ardumid. If they want to send those forces to Ardumid first, I can crush them in the defense, not a problem. And then I'll take Khaldun. And the yeah, other name, I just screwed. All right, what was that about Dol Amroth? Dol Amroth expands. The wings of the Silver Swan have spread far, and the power of Dol Amroth has become great, rivaling that of the heights of its protector. Ships of the Swan are seen all about the Southern Ocean, you, and the ground shakes as the hoops of the famous knights sweep away all those who oppose the Prince of Dol Amroth. Their soldiers fight with a fervor that is scarcely seen in the bleak lands of Gondor, and now more than ever is it apparent that they are a descendant of elves and men. The banners of the Swan are now a common sight and spread fear and doubt amongst those who would fight against them. Wait, that's us. The song of Amroth and Nimrodal has become the most feared war cry of the south. The wind was in his flowing hair, the foam about him shone. Afar they saw him strong and fair go riding like a swan. Nothing seems to be able to stop the princedom's expansion. Alright, Arachir Galadirithon, I see how it is. So now you think you are ready to take on the might of the Haradrim. Well, you can try. You're more than welcome to try. Any mercenaries in this area? I could pick up some Harondr mercenaries. But the thing is, I don't want to tussle too much with Dol Amroth just yet. Just not yet. Uh, I'd much rather well, retrain my troops first and foremost. Uh, and just focus on the Aradrim first. That's priority number one. Make sure we get some money in Ardumir. And I think in Ardumir, yeah, we need some more culture. That wasn't really a problem in Tal Aljaf. But uh, in Ardumir, definitely welcome. Yes, noble master. Okay, I think we can press the end turn besides that. Dale and Dolguldur are at war. No big surprise. Actually, I'd love to pick up an extra spy if I could. I can't. Only an extra diplomat. Well, I think my diplomat's ready to go north now. As you will. And I mostly want to use him to scout out Dol Amroth. It seems that's going to be our next venture. Let me just double check. Uh, get out of the tribes. Four regions, the Mohad, eight for the Chormen. 12 for the Hashari and 15 for the Mumakil. 15 is a lot. I know I could have expanded towards Khan, but I simply didn't have the manpower for it. So if I take Khaldun and Umbar, I'm at 8. And Karagmir puts me at 9. I think I can squeeze out 3 territories here, but before I unlock the Mumakil, I'm probably already quite deep into fighting Dol Amroth at the very least, and probably Gondor as well. That is slightly worrisome. But not insurmountable. I just need to treat the Boomer Kill as an extra, a gift. I shouldn't rely on them. This is going to be a while before we have them. But once I unlock them, they should... Emphasis on should, because they're probably hard to get. But once I unlock them, they should speed up any uh, conquest of Gondor. Stomp, stomp, stomp. At least in field battles. 
If I use them smart, which is a big if, I don't think we can lose too many battles. Oh, they picked up a general along the way. Probably just adopted him right on the it field. Azulzir. He reminds me of Gimothon. He will remind me a lot more of Gimothon when he's a trampled corpse on the battlefield. How may I serve? Okay. Yes, my master. So they pulled back towards yes, Kaldun. They got an extra army in there as well. Why are they pull I keep I'm keeping such a good eye on them and they just keep pulling troops out of their butt. Mm, doesn't matter too At much. Once. In fact, yes. there might be enough troops for them Coming to in. convince themselves Coming. that they can win a fight, which they can't. But that might lead to an easier grab of Kaldun. I do have my Bohat tribesmen to take down their general. We close for so let's lay siege to that. I haven't actually had to do any siege as battles so far, will. which is quite nice. As you will. Okay, he's coming in with quite a lot of troops, annoyingly enough. So, I'm going to play it safe and pick up those Haramur mercenaries. I don't like that I have to do that, but hey. And pick up... Hmm, uh, I don't know what they're bringing in. Coastal Wardens. Hmm. Oh, Coastal Wardens. Quite a big army, actually. So I'm going to pick up some extra troops, just in case. Hmm, okay, anything else? Let's get a grain exchange just because that's all I can afford. It's a large off. Yeah, I got those reinforcements. If he wants to have a go at Ardemir, that's fine. Maybe I shouldn't even wait and just move out and immediately meet him on the battlefield. Something can be said for that. Mm. You know what? I'll wait a bit longer. If he lays siege to me and then I attack him, the AI always acts a bit clumsy. Makes it even easier. I assume they'll attack me at Khaldun to try and rid themselves of my siege. We'll win that, and then we should be able to march to Umbar. Which will probably happen in the next episode, mind you. Alright. Uh, good Estala. Where the hell is Estala? Ah, over there. So my economy should be quite... Yeah, my economy is quite good. Okay. Isengard and Enedwaith are at war. Interesting. I mean, that's quite far away from us, so it doesn't really change much for us directly, but... Sometimes they work together, sometimes they go against each other, so... That's good for Dunland, at the very least. Because Anadwaid is quite powerful in version 5 of Dak. They always end up becoming this huge conglomerate of settlements and territories. So if they're going up against Isengard in the... Well, we're still in the early game. Then that should change things quite a bit. Alright, no attack on Ardumir. Instead, they have moved towards Khaldun. Interesting. Can I reach Umbar? I'm to I can with my calf. Hmm. He's getting desperate and picking up units left, right, and center. They're getting desperate and getting ready to launch an attack on me, which is not ideal. I need stables, really. I'd much rather get them at Estala. I can't really afford them. <laughs> so I think I'll just pick up Leather Tanners, I suppose, unless there are extra mercenaries now popping up. No. Okay. Any mercs around here? You say yes, but the answer is no. I think I need to launch the attack on Khaldun. Ah, uh, it's too risky. Let's see, this guy's coming over and he's gonna... I should have moved out and attacked him. Should have done it. Ah, well, hindsight's always 20-20, eh? The thing is, culture is a bit of a problem here. So if I move out yes, with my army, they're gonna get annoying in Ardumir, and a reinforcement is gonna move in from Umbar. They mm, they played quite well here. Can they reach me in the next it turn? They can. You. They'll move out and attack me at Khaldun. So what do I do here? I go after these guys first? To make sure they don't join in the next fight? Fight them one by one. If these four you. come in and help the garrison, that's also four. Yes, I can't beat that. Let's kill him first. Yeah, let's lift the siege, get rid of him first. Zagarakor, archers and crossbows. Yeah, that's we not a problem. Make sure we win with not too many casualties, please. Okay. Ah, the cool music's kicking in. Nice. See, now is always a bit of the, the situation where we need to move our troops carefully. I'm quite spread out. And by all means, if they 
consolidate. Oh, you're all the way over there. If they consolidate all my, all, all their men, and I consolidate all my men, the enemy would win. So I need to win by moving my troops in a smarter fashion than they are. That's all it takes. As if that's a very easy thing to achieve. It's not, but that's pretty much the the line of thinking here. All right, what have you got? Crossbows. And that's why I like medieval too much more than more modern total war games. Because every unit is so important. You can't just pick up a million units every turn. But that's more of a thing in the modern mode of total war games. But it doesn't really matter if you keep an eye on enemy troop positioning because there's no, like, there's no way to keep track of it and keep track of, okay, they're running out of troops. Or oh, those troops are gone in that settlement so they must have moved over there. Or maybe that's just me. Could be just me, really. I haven't really talked about it yet either, because I'm not really too bothered by it. And that's of course the newly announced Total War game, Total War Pharaoh, I believe it's called. Uh, I did watch the sort of trailer for it, I've seen some gameplay of it, and it just didn't really appeal to me. Then again, the entire Egypt Pharaoh setting... Eh... Doesn't really interest me either. I mean, it's, it's an interesting time period for sure. And in previous Total War games, mostly Room 1 and Room 2, sorta as well, but less so, the faction has always been a bit misrepresented, depending on the time period, of course. So it would be nice if they can get that right a little bit better. Surely their crossbows have less range than me. But yeah, uh, don't expect to see anything about that on the channel. I probably can't even run the game properly. I still need to upgrade my my rig. Still running a NVIDIA GTX 970, which is an ancient card at this point. But I'm just too poor. <laughs> well, it's not that I'm too poor. It's just I can't fathom spending that much money on a graphics card. Like, this thing has just become way too expensive. I mean, everything in life has become way too expensive. God damn. Come on, lads. Charge! That's a pretty slow charge, but okay. As long as the impact is there. And it definitely is. Yeah, arches are typically pretty spread out, so that makes it slightly harder to charge them. Don't shoot my Muhad. Why did I put my Muhad over there? That's a mistake on my part. 100%. Run, run, run. Don't let them... Don't let this crossbow shoot you. I need you guys healthy and fit. Move, move, move. Nah, I'm out of range. They can't shoot me. And then when they fire their bolts, that's when I turn around. Oh yeah, they screwed that up hard. Okay, nice. Archer stop firing. The risk of friendly fire is too big. For the Haradrim! The enemy are badly bloody. Nice. Four fights with horns made horns of clay. Horns made of clay. Winning the battle. Alright, those crossbows are engaged in melee, and the Corsairs are sacrificing themselves. Wonderful. Like a lamb going to slaughter, all on their own accord. Don't you just love to see it? Alright, charge! Oof. That was quite impactful. The enemy general flees like an old woman! Yeah! And break the will of his they all run children. like old women! Scour them from the field. And that's a pretty clean win. And that kind of sets the, the score for the next battle a bit easier. So those reinforcements that originally came from Umbar now move north. And we'll face both the garrison and those reinforcements. I think we'll have an edge. Most of them are Kassar, so I'm not too bothered. Just the Naru Naru will be a bit of a bitch. Alright, so I want to capture the captain just for good measure. There we go. That should be that. 41, yeah, that's fine, fine, fine. And an extra 300 gold coins in the pocket at this point. We shouldn't underestimate that, that's actually a big, big cash injection. Alright, good result. Alright, execute them. They couldn't even finish their have mercy. Oh, guys. Okay. How far can they reach? I respect you, hmm. my enemy. See, if I actually couldn't they reach me before? It now it seems be like they can't. If I move you, all the way to this side and besiege it from there, yes. 
Let me just already preface this by saying that yes, I could totally lay siege with only Abrazir and keep the other guys in reinforcement range, and that will just sally out, and I'll have my full troops because the AI is dumb and they don't take reinforcements into account. I'm not going to do that. That's quite cheesy gameplay. I'm not a big fan of that. But if I have a siege from this side, that's not cheesy. That's just smart gameplay because then they can't reach me. And I'm thinking, can I move in a reinforcement unit? Nah, it's too far. Unfortunately, it's too far. I could send in my South or Lancers, but there's only three of them, so not really worth it. I do have these pikemen, which I will send towards Talaljov. In fact, he might try to go for Talaljov. Would make sense. Alright, Dol Amroth is getting ready to attack me. Interesting. For now, I just want to keep bolstering my troops at Amonethal. I don't want to go on the offense against Dol Amroth, not yet. Kind of also waiting for Khan to pop up so they can help me in the ward. No point in investing in Amonethal because they'll be on the siege for the most part. Amrun, do we export to Khan yet? Trade 370, 401. Mm, I don't know actually. It's also expensive. Mm, let's pick up some pikemen. I know, I'm spending more money, but the pikemen are very helpful, especially once we are fighting Dol Amroth non-stop. Okay, well, I'm gonna round it off here, but I'd say today was a pretty good day. I think we achieved what we set out to achieve. We killed Gimel Zor and Gimel Thon, the two sons of Gimel Chad. Um, took Taraljaf, took Ardumir, close to taking Khaldun, and Umbar. Well, they are churning out units now, which is a little bit scary, but I should be able to finish them off rather soon. Once Azulzir is gone and we've taken Khaldun, both armies should be able to converge to Umbar. Um, Amonethal is about to get attacked by Dol Amroth, but we have sufficient forces there, so I'm not too worried about it falling. And then we'll look into taking Gobble Merlond and using that as a staging ground to try and push back against Dol Amroth. It'll be hard, it'll be very hard, yes, but it is our duty. As you will. Ah, see, they're already there as well. Dol Amroth is quite annoying. Mostly because they haven't... Normally the other name would go after Dol Amroth and give them a hard time, but the other name have decided not to do that, which puts me a bit on the back foot. Now, of course, once they take Khaldun and Umbar, we should also unlock the Trollman of Harad. So plenty more to look forward to in this campaign. Lots of adventures ahead of us. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode, and I hope to catch you all soon for episode number four.